coming to you live from the It's Funny Studios. I'm Doug. I'm Greg. And this is Mike. And this is the It's Funny That Makes It Okay podcast. Hey, welcome everybody. Thanks for tuning in to the show. I hope you all are doing great. Welcome back. Well, we have good news and bad news. What's the good news? Well, I'll give you the bad news first. The bad (laughs) news is Mike is out again this week. The good news is he advanced in his World Gravy Wrestling Championship. So he's out one more week. Did he get the brown gravy cup? See, I don't know. See, I I think I was doing a little reading. I think he starts out with like au jus, which really isn't. It's not gravy. That's just, well, I know he was practicing in pancake syrup this week. Well, well that that is going to build up your stamina right there. That's yeah, a lot of resistance yeah. training. He went with the brown gravy. I would think the championship is going to be the white gravy or maybe even sausage gravy. Yeah, throw Especially some if there's a wardrobe there, malfunction. Yeah. <laughs> throw some chunks in. Yeah, so it, it, there is no mic again. It's just Greg and myself. Yep. And bear with me. My throat has been destroyed by allergies and sinuses, so I'm going to do my best to get through this episode we'll do the best we can all right well um this is kind of a junk drawer episode it's just aren't they all a lot of (laughs) well a lot of stuff that has nothing to do with anything i think you've got something up the top about a festival that we went to yeah they have Um, a gripe too yeah and a gripe i've got a few things about some world records a guy broke a world record and then i found a few other like weird world records that were out there and a flight that got um, sent, turned around, had to go back due to a biohazard. Yeah. We're going to learn about that. It'd be a crappy flight. It would be a crappy flight. <laughs> I would, uh, I would not be happy. And, uh, have you ever done hot bedding? I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so either, but we're going to find out bedding what that is. Or betting. Bedding. B E D D I N G. Hot okay. bedding. No, I, I don't believe so. And people out there are stressing and they want to, uh, to help themselves. We've heard of support, emotional support animals. Yeah. We've got some, some things that aren't animals that people are trying to use for emotional support. And then I it think made you me take a look at what I could use yes, for emotional support. We will so. see. And then I think you've got a story about two men that get into a fight over chickens. Okay. Chickens. Yeah. So. All right. Well, why don't you just jump right in? Let's get this show rolling. All right. Well, you know my normal gripe has been many times over McDonald's. Yes. And then I went to the Bigger Guns Twitter. Or X. Or X, formerly known as Twitter. Formerly known as Twitter. (laughs) Well, this week I'm going big again, Amazon. Woo! Man, the one and two richest men in the world. Look out, Jeff Bezos. We're coming for you. You better watch it. We are coming for you. So... A couple days ago, I ordered a lava lamp for my... Because mid- you're a 13-year-old boy from <laughs> living in 1968. It's my emotional support lava lamp. <laughs> oh! <laughs> no, I ordered a lava lamp for my mid-century modern office that I'm putting together upstairs. Okay. So, I ordered it from Amazon, and I was looking at the delivery date, kind of with an expected, when I expected to be here based on previous things I purchased with Amazon. I'm a Prime member, so I thought, okay, two or three days is to be here. Well, la-di-da, fancy Prime member. That's right. <clears throat> and uh, I got looking, and it's like a little longer than I anticipated. So I'm like, hold it. I, put, I pay for Prime. This shouldn't take that long. So I started looking for options. I'm going to talk to him about this. It's like I had to go down this rabbit hole. It's like I'm going to find out. What's the benefit of Prime anymore if it's not the shipping? So I looked for options for support, and I found you could chat with them. Oh, nice. You know, chat. You bring up a window. You type a question. They type an answer. You type a, you know, whatever. So I found their chat window, and it said, uh, start chatting now. So I clicked chat. So it asked me, it showed me my item. And since that's the only item I had ordered, it showed me a picture of it and said, is this the item? And I'm like, yes, yes, it is. And then it said, let me check on this for you. Well, things are sounding like they're going pretty well so far. Yeah. And at this point, I still think I'm talking to a human. <laughs> I say it's, it's AI. It's, it's a- got to be AI. Because then the next question is, depending on the shipping location, 
your estimated delivery date may change before your item ships. Okay. It says, I've confirmed your order, and it's on track to be delivered by the date it showed me. Sound good? (laughs) And it doesn't give me a place to respond. It gives me options. And it says, I want to cancel. How fast will it ship? I want to update my shipping address. I want to update my payment method. I'm all set. You're all set. So nowhere can I put in. No, I want to know what is the benefit of Prime. And, you know, I can't put that anywhere. So I back out and I try it The again. benefits are too numerous to count, Greg. We can't count them all. <laughs> so the one option it gave me was how fast will it ship? So I thought, well, I'll try that one. Maybe it'll give me some insight as to what's going on. And it says, looks like you chose one day shipping for this order. So it should arrive one business day after it ships. There's the caveat after it, it ships. ships. It's still on track to be delivered by Sunday, October 15th. It's two weeks away. It's like, what am I and paying? you need your lava lamp now. I do. It's urgent. You needed it yesterday. Well, it's it's like, what am I paying for Prime Your emotions for? are all over the place now because you don't have your emotional lava lamp, emotional support lava lamp. I, 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 I don't. I don't have it. So I resolved it, but... I said, so it says you can learn more about shipping methods and how delivery dates are calculated, blah, blah, blah. (laughs) Do you have any questions about this? But nowhere, and at the very beginning of the chat, it said, go through this. It'll help you get to the right associate. And it's like, I can't get to an associate. (laughs) Now it's giving me, do you have any questions about this? Here are two options. No, I'm all set. And B, I want to cancel my order. So what I did? I canceled my order. Oh. And then I went and found another lava lamp that had the this Sunday delivery and bought it. Now, we'll see. I've not gotten a message yet on when that one will be <laughs> here, but it's still saying right now on track for delivery. Why do I Sunday. picture a big box coming in? It's fragile. You open it up, and it's going to be like the Christmas <laughs> store. You're going to put it in the window. Then you'll go in the other room, and you hear a crash, and Lori will be like, I was dusting the flower. I don't know what happened. It's uh. busted on the floor. No. Yeah. My lava lamp. So my big issue is what am I paying for Prime? I mean, yeah, I can get the channel or whatever or music, I guess, but I don't really occasionally I'll use the Prime network for a movie or something. Rarely, but occasionally. So are the movies I, on Prime free or do you have to pay for them? Well, it depends. Are you Prime regular or did you pay for a premium service? Cuz if you want to pay for a premium service, then you can get some additional movies. Otherwise, you get the select ones they've got in their queue, which sometimes are okay. But because that's kind of my gripe. This is a little bit of a, an aside, but through the phone company we have, <clears throat> they came up and said, "Hey, now we've got this deal, and you can you can have Apple TV for free. You can sign up for it for free." I said, "Free's okay, good. I'll sign up for it." I signed up for it. Almost everything on there. I went to. I was like, "Oh, look at there!" I, I click on it. It says. You can rent this for two ninety nine or buy. It. They're all rent or buy. I mean, there are. I think I counted maybe a dozen movies that you can watch and shows, and a few other things for like kids. But most of it is just things that you can rent. I'm like, what is? Why would I go out and buy or pay a monthly fee for Apple TV? What's I would, the benefit? I would not. What? Yeah, what's the benefit of this? I don't see a benefit to it. <clears throat> That's me. Well, but I'm, still, I'm a curmudgeon and a grouchy old man. Well, I remember last year I was having all the the issue trying to watch the Halloween Baking Championship. Yes. You were it well, it's ruined back your on. whole it ruined your whole holiday. Was well, back on again. So supposedly you have DVR. You said I do. I found it. You're able to. It's set to record now. Do we'll, not mess we'll, with Greg's <laughs> baking shows. <laughs> I need my baking shows. I have that and the Halloween Cookie Show. Recording. There you go. Week. So I'm all set. All right. All right. To move on. A couple of weeks ago, I was kind of waiting for Mike to get back because he participated in this with me. But since he's, you know, made the finals and stuff, he probably, I don't know when he'll be back. I think he's still trying to get the syrup out of all of his nooks and crannies. So <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> that takes a while. And I'm not sure where the finals are held or any of that. So he could be gone for a little bit. Yeah. <clears throat> so, um, a couple of weeks ago, we had the local Morton Pumpkin Festival. Yep, 
right? You're yep, familiar with that? We did. Well, I feel pretty good about myself because I got up at 6 a.m. on Saturday and did the two mile fun run. <laughs> well, good for you. Walk. <laughs> So I'm feeling pretty pumped. I did yep. the, the two miles. Lori and I did. Did you have? Was it fun for the entire two miles? There might have been a quarter mile that wasn't that fun. I don't know. <laughs> the whole thing. I, I guess we kind of had fun. I don't know that I've ever had fun running. I'll be honest with you. I but I hate cardio. I don't like to run. But it's a fun run walk. <laughs> Most of the people. So you oh, do you have fun if you walk though? Do you have to run to have fun? Because it's a fun run, slash well, or walk. walk. <laughs> I think the, the runners sad, probably the had the more sad fun. People are walking. Look at the sad walkers. And Poor I'm convinced walkers. that the two mile fun run walk is for the people who are out of shape that want to feel I good, say, or in my good case, about themselves. It would be fun run slash walk slash <laughs> waddle. <laughs> I would be waddling up the back. I'd look like a weeble wobble coming down the street. Yeah. So hobbling along. That's right. I got going. You know, it's like people, you know, there's also at the same time, 15 minutes later, it starts. There's a 10K run. I guess you could walk on that, too, which I would. For insane people. For seven miles. Yeah. So 10K. Um, and people train for that. Does anybody train for the two mile fun run walk? Yeah, you they listen, a lot to, of they listen to comedy shows, laugh a lot. I'm black. I'm training for the fun run. <laughs> so as we, as we went Somebody on, somebody walks behind you and tickles you. Gitch, 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 woo! <laughs> fun run. Are you having fun? There was clowns. <laughs> <laughs> That's scary. <laughs> it could be scary. Um, but yeah, I mean, as we started going, I look. I I took a picture of it. There, there is a mass of humanity out there for this two mile fun run walk. And there there's some places where I felt a little bad. I was getting passed by strollers. <laughs> not so, women pushing them actual just strollers <laughs> rolling the babies <laughs> the babies are, are using it like you're pushing the wheels they're yeah. passing you when you're getting beat by strollers that's you know that's sad yes um not fun and then i it was weird as we started down the first main street after we were around the corner there's a guy sitting out there in his front yard in his lawn chair like cheering people on you're cheering on two mile walkers. walkers and fun runners. I mean, he's out there. Some people were along the route had cowbells. It's like when as slow as I would walk, I'd have to hear that stupid cowbell for five minutes before I get out of their earshot. I guess and you don't have to ring the bell the whole time. I'm going to be a while in front of your house. I thought at one point about you know they do this and you'll see this in like uh, marathons. People will cheat. Yeah, I was going to go up one of the side streets and meet them over on the other end. Make it a mile and a half fun run walk, <laughs> or half a mile fun run. Walk. Yeah. Then I was worried about injuries. Yeah, I, I could have b- pulled an Achilles or something. Yeah. You know, I could have. It could have been broke bad. your funny bone. Then it wouldn't <laughs> have been a fun run. <laughs> wouldn't have been fun no. at all. Then no. Yeah, and I was disappointed there were no water cups that I could grab from the people on the side and throw on my head when I walked by, you know. <laughs> you just walk, somebody could walk into their house, get you a you know, cup of tap water and bring it out. I'll still, I won't be past your yard yet. <laughs> yeah, just meet me down by the driveway. Yes, I'll be yes. down there in a minute. I might be sitting at the end of your driveway. I don't know. <laughs> and then there was one house we went by, and there were a group of people out front kind of partying and cheering and all this stuff and they had eye of the tiger playing so we're walking and we're walking what time to in, in the morning is this well but it started at seven so uh, there's just mobs of people i How mean it could be somebody that lives on that street and you work like third shift your home you're trying to get them you hear the oh no cowbells and eye of the tiger eye i would be tiger. out there like listen <laughs> bom, bom, bom. oh we gotta move this along and it was probably on loop so you're yeah. gonna hear eye of the tiger for you know 45 minutes <laughs> and fortunately there were no kenyans in the fun walk run i think they would have destroyed us oh I they would have you know they're walking really fast oh you they're, boom they're gone in three minutes <laughs> barefoot I can't even see them. you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah so you gotta watch the kenyans yes you know and i wonder do kenyans train for a walk two mile fun run <laughs> I think that's just called living in kenya <laughs> i think that's just what they just they just walk and run i don't know yeah so I we walked we mostly walked it Lori and I did, and it took us thirty two minutes. The, the guy that won the ten k race did it in thirty one minutes. 
but he was not having so, fun. So he was seven miles. I will wager he was not having fun. You had fun for thirty we had two minutes. Gods of fun. We didn't uh we didn't run much. It was mostly the walk. And that's fine. So the fun run slash walk. You're moving though. You're outside, so, you're moving. And what's funny, we didn't partake of these because our daughter had a separate bra- you you get a coupon on the bottom of your registration that you can go get after the race race after the race you can go get a donut and coffee or you can go over and get the pancake breakfast with sauce you're exercising now i'm going to go over and plow through a stack so you want of a pumpkin. carb load before the fun walk <laughs> or during <laughs> So I could have gone over and got a stack of pumpkin pancakes. You probably pancakes. could have ate the pancakes on your walk. You probably could have. <laughs> so anyways, that was uh, that was the two-mile walk fun run. And I've been, I'm have been i training for next year's now. I've started training. You're laughing uh, a lot. I'm going to be I'm laughing. Giggling. I go out and walk a half a block once each in a while. day. <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, I just walk from here to the neighbor's driveway and back. Yeah. Wasn't uh, that fun? Yeah, it was, a, it was a blast. I'm playing Eye of the Tiger while well, I do it. That's a that's a must. I asked my neighbor if they could like ring a cowbell for me yeah, when I go at by. seven in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways, that's the two mile. And Mike did it with Courtney. They did it with us. Um, we kind of left them in the dust, so we were well, moving. I would. I don't doubt it. <laughs> we, you know, Lori and I are trucking on the fun walk. You guys have the fun oh, walk. Sorry, down. fun run walk. Uh, the fun run walk. <laughs> so. Okay, that's all I got with the fun run. All right, and I just sent you a picture. I have this. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Everybody out there, if you look on your phone, uh, it's through Messenger, and it'll be from the It's Funny That Makes You Okay podcast. No, oh, you sent it to people? <laughs> to all of our listeners. <laughs> to our listeners? Yes. That's amazing that we can do that. Technology is wonderful. <clears throat> it's called, the, the theme was, they have a theme every year. Like last year was festival. 80s pumpkins for the festival. This year it was farming pumpkins. That's right. And they had this. a t-shirt. They had this sign that said farming pumpkins and then they had a pumpkin sitting next to it and i would think if you were going to have a farming pumpkin what would you what would you make your pumpkin look like a cardboard cut out of a pumpkin i would have it like overall overall maybe a big straw hat john deere hat or yeah, yeah straw john hat. deere holding the pitchfork you know but bales of hay around it the american gothic just yeah <laughs> what does that pumpkin look like to you Looks like a ballerina. Yeah, or it's that, or it's got like a, a grass skirt. I don't know what. I've never seen a farmer look like <laughs> wearing pumpkin this. tutus. <laughs> farmer gets out in his grass skirt and hits up into the combine. Got to get the corn. Maybe it's corn stalks. It's a corn stalk skirt. Yeah, straw skirt. I just was curious, like, why did they do that for farming pumpkins? I don't know. Okay. Huh. I thought maybe you being from Morton. <clears throat> well, and officially, fun I run. think that is kind of the mascot of the whole. But why the skirt? Because they had it last dress, year, too. Well, dress it up, like whatever the theme is. They put two or three of those around town. Last year, one or two got stolen. <laughs> Somebody's stealing our pumpkin. That would have dressed it up. Yeah. I would have went and put something on it. Yeah. Overalls. Yeah. John Deere hat. Something. Make it look farmy. Yeah. Oh, one other quick thing about the fun run walk <laughs> is we got a free or not a free we with our paid uh, tuition or whatever you call it uh, entry fee. We got a t shirt with it too. Oh, and I feel a little weird wearing it because the, the t shirt says ten k or or ten k slash two mile fun run walk or something like that it's like so when i wear it, people are gonna be oh did you do the 10k no i did the two the two miles See, if i wore it they wouldn't even have to ask they just look at me like <laughs> yeah he didn't he was maybe he walked actually he probably got that at goodwill see i need to have a pumpkin <clears throat> festival t-shirt made that has a picture of a lawn chair on it yes that's like for the parade because yes. that's what everybody really gets into it is. is setting up the lawn chairs it is so that's my pumpkin festival update all right. Well, thank you. Everyone appreciates it. <laughs> yes. Two miles. <sighs> All right. <laughs> Did you like the Guinness Book of World Record? I loved the Guinness Book oh, of World Record it. as a kid. And when we had, like, you'd have the uh, book fair mm-hmm. at school, mm-hmm. I always wanted to get the the Guinness Book of World Record. And the things I remember about it, it had the, the two fat twins on the motorcycles. <laughs> I don't know what they're, they would, they would, and now they, they're just kind of like, you know, 
people you'd see at Walmart on the scooters. Yeah. I mean, they were big guys, but at the time they were like, in the oh, fun run. Yeah, <laughs> they they, they, they passed you ironically. Yeah, <laughs> but they had those guys. They had the the disgusting guy with the longest fingernails, which oh, grossed yeah. me out. Yeah, I hate that. that. Or the the longest mustache. You know, the guy pulling it out. What about the guy who got shot in the belly with a cannonball? Yeah. <laughs> They'd have a bunch of weird stuff. I loved the Guinness Book of yeah, World Records. Yeah, I like the, the Guinness Book. Well, I saw a guy, he broke a Guinness Book World Record on America's Got <laughs> Talent. Really? But before I get into that, I found some other odd um, world records. And I'll just we'll just go over them kind of quick here. I'll, first, it says the most Big Macs consumed in a lifetime. What do you think, think they are? I think that's me. It could be. <laughs> so the number? Yeah. How many? Consumed in a lifetime? That's what it says. Now, I don't know. It doesn't say he died. It says after 40 years eating Big Macs on a daily basis. I don't know if he just quit or if he's still going. Um, this was this was back in 2012 he set this record. October 11, 2012. So maybe he did die. 12,642. No. 26,000 Big Macs. That's a lot of special lot sauce, of Mac. lettuce, cheese, yeah. pickles, onions, on a sesame seed bun. That is a lot of Big Mac. That is a lot of Big Mac. Okay. Maybe I'll try to compete and go eat Whoppers. And, and who comes up? That This is part of the thing. Who comes up with these, that this is a world record? Who does this? Here's one. The longest distance keeping a table lifted with your teeth. <laughs> now, let me let me read. <clears throat> let me read what he did. Yeah, because I'm having trouble visualizing yeah, so it. So this, this guy from Luxembourg, he ran. Carrying a 26 pound table and a 110 pound woman sitting on it. Jeez. Only using his mouth. How far do you think he was able to run with that? That's, that's a lot of weight to carry. That's just a lot of weight to carry. And then let alone. 50 yards. No. 38 feet, eight inches. (laughs) I had no idea. (laughs) Which is still quite the feat, if you ask me. I don't know how you even do it. The largest collection of rubber ducks. I think they sit on the dash of a Jeep. Oh, I don't. Yeah, the Jeep people. <laughs> Relax, Jeep people. I'm just kidding you. Yeah, you girls out there. That's right. <laughs> How um, many? Yeah, this was by Charlotte Lee. The this largest is collection. Of, this is of as of 10th of April of 2011. Of she rubber this, ducks. She set this record. Had been collecting rubber ducks since 1996. How many do you think she has? 10,500. No, 5,631. I keep doubling it, man. You do. Here, the largest collection of garden gnomes and pixies. <laughs> they don't break down by pixie and garden gnome. It's all... This included. is in uh, West Putford, England by Anne Arkin. She has her... Her home is known as the Gnome Reserve. As of March 2011, she set the record. 175. I'm going lower. 2042. <laughs> she has a four acre area of gnomes and pixies. <clears throat> the gnomes kind of freak me out a lot. I bit. am not a fan of the gnomes. They're, I, I got family members that do little gnome gardens and stuff. They're kind of creepy. I don't know. Our parts guy at our other building at work looks like a gnome. <laughs> It's going to get to him, and he's and he's grouchy, too, so I'm going to hear about this. He's the grouchy gnome. <laughs> I'm going to put him in my garden. Okay, here's <laughs> one. This was, this was uh, going to be a disgusting one, but the oldest male stripper. Oh, I don't even want to see. Ah. Magic Mike had nothing on Bernie Barker. Well, just that his name's Bernie tells me he's old. Since he was a former real estate agent, got into stripping in 2000. As a way to get in shape after uh, beating prostate cancer. Did he do the fun runs and walks? Says he uh, won over 40 contests. Well, unfortunately, he died in 2007 at the Ooh. age of six. Uh, oh. Because I was going to say 70. 66. Oh. He started stripping <laughs> at 60. I was going to make some So that you're, so you're telling me there's died. still hope. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I think, uh, yeah, that's a way to get in Not shape. Not much, but a little bit. And the last one I have here before we get into the gentleman who broke the record. <laughs> the farthest shooting an arrow using only your feet. And they had a picture of this woman. Is it a she, girl? Yeah, yeah, I've seen her She, like, it. stands on her head or kind of like she bends like in a U almost. 
So she's, she's kind of a sharpshooter too, and she yes, and she gets on you know kind of props herself up onto her elbows and her legs come up over and she yeah. uses her legs to grab the bow and arrow and pulls it back. I can't do it with my arms. <laughs> I could. I couldn't either. I tried to shoot a compound bow. She shot the compound bow and hit the target bullseye from how far? Just and only her feet. Um, seventy five feet. And the the target was it's only a twelve inch target. Jeez. Oh no! It says that they require a twelve inch target. She used a five and a half inch Jeez. target and hit the bullseye. I guess if you're going right down the middle, <clears throat> it probably doesn't matter. <laughs> Twenty feet. Twenty feet. Yeah, and that's still quite a ways oh, that's, to go yeah, that's... using only your feet. Yes. And all that gets us to Zach the Horse Ooh. Gordman, and he went on America's Got Talent to break the record for the most pine boards broken using only his groin. And the way they did it was they put all Is these he a boards. Soprano? <laughs> it might be now. They put all these boards underneath of him, you know, spaced out in about a foot, and then they he goes up and drops himself onto them and just crashes through all of these boards. He went through eight boards, breaking them all using just his groin. Now I thought when I first saw it, that is nuts. They showed it kind of in, you know, fast motion. It just went through, and it was like, okay, maybe he's kind of hit it with his thighs and kind of went down then they show it in slow motion <laughs> he pulls his legs apart and it's hitting right in the testicles all the i'm like oh my god first how is this a record who did the seven it's like i got seven it's like this guy's like i'm doing one more i gotta do eight i'm doing eight second how do you know you have this talent and why would you want this talent? Maybe he was out working in the yard, fell on a board, it broke, and he's like, hey, that didn't hurt as bad as I thought it was going to. Well, I I kind of did a little deep dive on him. It said here uh, he broke the record last. Well, this was uh, when, I don't know when he broke it, earlier this year, <clears throat> August. So last month. It says, when I was little, I used to fight with my little brother. He tried to take any advantage he could, and he started kicking me in the groin. <laughs> and that's when I realized it didn't hurt. I could take it and keep going. <clears throat> okay, there's something wrong with this guy. <laughs> said, then there was this toy spring horse on the playground made of metal. Yeah, I remember those. You remember the horse that was, it had the spring that would go in the ground. You could get on them uh-huh. and go back. back and he forth. said that the kids, they would pull it back and let it go, and it would just fly and hit him into the hit him in the crotch. <laughs> he said, I ran around screaming, but a normal person probably would have been to the hospital. So it did hurt, but he's like, ah, I can take it. That's when I realized... Not only can I take a kick, I can take a crazy amount of force. <laughs> How's he work that out? He gonna... Says he's a happy stay-at-home father of two daughters. So his wife is earning the bread, unless there's lucrative. Well, he's got a lot of training to do. Unless there's lucrative money and, you know. Board cracking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, crotch Fighting, or I don't know. That sounds weird. Well, that's what I wanted, you know, because a lot of How times, do you make money at this? A lot of you people. Have sponsors? <laughs> maybe. Maybe he's got little uh, signs on his thighs or something. Little, Duluth uh, Trading Company. <laughs> they can, they they can do up. it. They can do they have it. the commercial of the guy getting his groin put in a vice. This right. guy really would do it. And the beaver smacking. Yeah, and, he'd spanking the beaver and all that stuff. Yeah. So this guy could really do it. He could probably find some. Yeah. Maybe... Uh, Jock itch, you know, spray, that would be another one. You know, you're taking a beating down there. I'm sure that's some some lotion of some kind. There's got to be a way. I guess your your usage for that could be as, you know, you trip somebody up and get them knocked to the ground, and then you jump on them. <laughs> <laughs> and knock them out. If you, you know, you're so strong. I don't want to be knocked out that way. <laughs> I would say, please just punch me or kick me, stomp me. <clears throat> when I was reading this, I was wondering, because like in karate, they they do this, right? They'll break it with their hands. Yeah. And typically karate is cha- training you either offensive or defensive. Would this be an offensive or a defensive move? That's a good question. I don't know. Yeah, because if you're using it for offense, yeah, then you got to jump on people. But if it's defense, I guess just the ability to take a kick. And or if it's something. offense, I feel like you're going to be fighting people with a lot of pelvis thrust. And does, he get, thrust. <laughs> does he get belts? 
I don't know. We're sparring today. No, I'm, I am not sparring with him. <laughs> He's going to be a black belt by himself. I'm not fighting him with this. <laughs> yeah. We're not going to have a duel or anything. <laughs> All right. I don't know. Did you have anything else to add to that before we move on? No, I think that's it. All right. This next story is, this is like a nightmare of mine come to life. This was... <laughs> says footage from a Barcelona bound Delta flight that was forced to return to Atlanta shows the aftermath of passengers horrific bout of diarrhea that caused a biohazard. <sighs> it was so bad. It caused a biohazard. Well, just a little bit to me causes a biohazard. Yeah, it doesn't take much. And this was bad it says disgusting footage appears to show the soiled interior of a Delta flight that was forced to turn around after a passenger had diarrhea throughout the entire plane. <sighs> Excrement and paper towels were visible in the aisles of the evacuated aircraft during a clip film following the mid-air disaster on Friday. Did he explode? <laughs> I, it, they showed pictures that it's literally down the entire aisle of the airplane. I they oh. There's a barf bag there. Use it. <laughs> or several. There's a bathroom in the bag. Or if you're having it, quit running around. <laughs> I mean, I know you're trying to get to the bathroom, but... At some point, stop. Yeah, just sit find a seat. And... Like, I, listen, I'm destroying this seat. I'm sorry. That's <laughs> this better than this, this area might want to clear out. <laughs> I hear flight. The flight had taken off from Atlanta, was set to Barcelona, didn't even make it to the Atlantic before the unwell flyer Did forced they the pilot. Did him out in the Atlantic? I would have. To return to the airport after the mess, it was deemed a biohazard. 336 passengers were delayed for hours by the incident. <laughs> Customers were quick to play. So they, they took it back. Crews scrubbed the entire jet, and they had to rip out the carpet and replace it. It said it took five hours. They all boarded the same airplane and flew back. <laughs> I'd be like, they I gotta. waited five hours? It was eight hours late, eight hours behind schedule. I'm like, you have got to be kidding. I have, you've got to get me a new airplane. Yeah, I cannot yeah. be on this airplane. Yeah, I know. This what guy was, destroyed it. I cannot do that. I know what was here. I can't unsee that. I don't know. I don't know. When I worked at Walgreens, we had a couple of different instances of the poo. <laughs> that's, one, that's never good. The poo. I mean, one was somebody. But not Winnie. No, not Winnie the poo. Just <laughs> the poo. Somebody went in the aisles out in the store, and this was not diarrhea. <laughs> It was, was like big dirt? chunks, oh. and it was like across two or three oh. aisles, and then up an aisle. So I had to assist with cleaning that up, oh, and then I, I couldn't do it. One time in the men's room, I walk in and there's like poop all over the walls. I the have floor. went to a bathroom that's like that. How does that? How happen? do you get stuff on the walls? I don't know. It happens. People do it. It's like, how how do you get it up there? I mean, I can see a little splatter out of the toilet, you know. I, I, I don't know. The, I, st- I haven't even had a problem with that. Well, I know. I'm just saying in an extreme situation, maybe that. But not the walls and the door and the the ceiling. I mean, how are you getting it up there? I don't know. Are you playing in it afterwards or what? what's going on with this? If somebody took a picture of like the... Uh... The flight strips that they it, like the official strip that comes out like telling about the pass not not to passengers but like to the airlines hey this flight's been diverted or there's an emergency or whatever it's like two seven nine uh, gives a flight number here Delta flash divert to Atlanta passenger diarrhea all over aircraft biohazard <laughs> I trying to be on the cleanup crew and you see that coming in like oh come on. Really? A tower? We've got a little issue. <laughs> they said that uh, flight attendants had put paper towels all down uh, the aisle to try to put think so, of the soap smell. it up. They said they used va- like a vanilla spray. Oh, vanilla. That's but good. then they said it just smelled like vanilla turds. Oh. <laughs> so it was not, not a good sign. Not I think good. I would have been using the barf bag. Oh, I would have. Uh, yeah. It's... This, this was bad. I would have yeah, had to scream, quit running around. Yeah, sit down. <laughs> Pummel him. <laughs> <laughs> something put him in a bag you got a big garbage bag put a garbage bag over his bottom half and just let him fill it up get him out of there i mean i get it if you're sick but 
Yeah, <clears throat> don't go running all around. <laughs> yeah, I understand the accident part of it, but it's just like not all over the plane. Yeah. All yeah. right. Anything else with that <clears throat> one? No, it's almost like the guy behind us at Foreigner puking oh, while we're at the was, concert. That was not good either. <laughs> and not and not leaving. <laughs> yeah. Just wipe it off. Yeah. All right. Well, we're going to move on. We have a uh, an influencer here who is uh, raising, she's, she's making some money. I'm not influenced. No. It says, I make hundreds renting out one side of my bed, <laughs> but hot bedding requires boundaries. Duh. She's living the dream, sleeping with folks and charging them per lay is what it says. Uh, she says, welcoming strangers into her bed every night has become a profitable practice for one sexy singleton who tucks an extra 600 bucks a month by renting out the unoccupied side of her mattress, where her boyfriend had once slept two for two years. Says her hot side hustle is part of the hot bedding trend. Hot bedding is excellent for people who are able to detach emotionally and sleep next to another person in a completely respectful and non-strings attached manner. Um, said the entrepreneur from Queensland, Australia. And uh, it says, hot betting has yet to achieve viral glory on social media. Uh, but Oh, it's getting there, though. But she's gotten over 762,000 views. But she makes, so basically, I looked, I kind of was scrolling through and reading some stuff. From what it looks like, it's not like a sexual thing. It's just people will pay because they want to, <clears throat> I don't yeah, know why, why they're going to sleep. Well, that's what she says. <laughs> they're going to sleep in the bed with somebody else <laughs> says the trend uh it's extremely lucrative as long as both parties are clear on the terms it takes two people who respect each other's space value and boundaries to do hot bedding it is just like sharing a room with two beds however you only sleep in the same bed together so you definitely want a big bed and lots of space now says that this woman here is the founder of diversity models it's an agency that specializes in curvy, cultural, and mature age models, um, she began leasing out her boudoir on the, uh, at the onset of the pandemic in an effort to supplement her income. My thought is if you're hot bedding, and I don't mean to be mean, but this, I guess I'm going to say it anyway. This is this way. Would you want a hot bed with a, a curvy model? Because <laughs> it seems like you wouldn't want a hot bed with me. I'm a bigger guy. It seems like you want, you want the skinny person, right? So I get the bed. A lot I'd of the probably bed? get the diarrhea guy from oh. the airplane. <laughs> oh, <God. clears throat> it's like, oh, come on. I didn't know that's what you meant by hot bedding. This is disgusting. <laughs> I just got off the plane with you. <laughs> I don't get who's paying 600 bucks just to go and lay next to somebody in a bed. And why is it with any of these things like this, it's never ugly people. <laughs> well, you're not going to make 600 bucks if you're ugly. You get the ugly discount. Okay, I'll let you sleep for two hundred. You can sleep with the beautiful person for six hundred bucks. <laughs> I'll give you. A, I'll give you the ugly discount. It's one fifty. Yeah, you get a bargain. You get, I I generate a lot of heat too. I mean, it would be a hot bed. I'm a warm person. And I wonder what the ratio of men clients versus women clients is. <laughs> what do you think? I would say ten to one. I was gonna say ninety percent men. <laughs> it's got to be. Yeah. I mean, the women probably the other way, 10 to 1 women renting out the bed. Yeah. But uh, it's mostly men clients. Yeah. And they're going to want to talk to you. <laughs> the men or the women? No, the women. They're yeah, going to want to talk to you. Because that's how it always is. We're going to talk late into the yes. night. <laughs> About important stuff that I should be thinking of yes. and I can't stay awake. Yes. Are you sleeping? Yes. That's what you do in bed. I go to sleep. When I lay down, I close my eyes. It's over. I cannot help it. Well, I can't sleep. Oh, so anyway, hot betting, another weird Do you care trend. if I put Gossip Girls on TV? <laughs> gossip Girls. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, but anyway. So anything else with that? I just I saw that. I was like, what? This is people are nuts. I, I kind of wouldn't you like just having the big bed all by yourself? Why do you want to? And. Well, I don't do think my wife these... would be happy with me hot betting anyways, <laughs> no, but probably not. <laughs> probably probably not. Um we would have to scrunch to one side <laughs> and then the other person would Yes. yes. 
Yeah. Like it is now. Like in my bed, my <laughs> wife can't stand for me to touch her or she gets way Get over away. here and I say, Oh, oh, you're too high. Get off of me. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that wouldn't work very well either. But, uh, yeah, she said she can make about a little over 160 bucks a week, uh, doing the hot bedding. So, all right. More power to her, I guess. I guess. Okay. And uh, the last thing that I have is about people who are starting to buy Barbies or dolls for emotional support. That can they're thinking it can improve the adult mental health. Um, I don't know how you feel about this, but anyway, it says after the and this was kind of all started from the Barbie movie earlier in the year. The popularity it had it took off, and some of the people here, I think. They're, they're, they're like trying to relive their childhood or something. A lot of them are saying, I never had a Barbie. We couldn't afford one. So they're getting this Barbie and it makes them feel good about themselves. It helps their, uh, their emotional support or it helps support them emotionally, I should say. Um, but, uh, I'm sorry here. It says recently adults on social media have shared their newly purchased Mattel dolls touting a toy, the toy in a bid to reconnect with their, oh, to reconnect with their childhood uh, with the hashtag emotional support Barbie that uh, garnered over 1.9 million views on TikTok because <laughs> that's where everything goes. Yes. <clears throat> one person said I, my daughter bought me an American doll, American girl doll, because I never had one as a child. It definitely heals something. Others are trying to pick Barbie's who have the same career as them or maybe one they aspire to so that they can look at it and think, oh, I'll get uh, support from them. Barbie's so successful. I want to be like her. Well, I just got to thinking that. Is that the best toy to use as emotional support? Because Barbie has done it all. I feel like Barbie would be like, listen, bum, you need to get out there and bust your butt and get to work. Right. I've been an astronaut. I was looking up some of the stuff they've been. They've I got been, Ken over here. You, <laughs> I, that's what I have. Ken would be the better one. He's done nothing. You feel so much better about yourself. You look at Ken. It's like, well, at least I'm not a Ken. What's this? Oh, it's my emotional support, Ken. Yeah, sure. He's got a great body, but <laughs> which makes me feel a little intimidated. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe I need the. But I'm doing the fun run. Well, so <laughs> look out, Ken. Yeah, but. But Barbie's been an astronaut, a ballerina, an actor, uh, a chef. I mean, I mean there's hundreds of jobs. I think jobs. she was a doctor. She was a circus performer in 1955, uh, 1995. She's been multiple different kinds of dancers, can-can, cabaret, ballroom, been a film producer. I'm just scrolling through and uh, reading. Here's one. Now, this one here, maybe maybe I'd feel better. A beach snack stand worker. <laughs> I don't want to set my I can side. probably relate to that one a little I don't want to more. set my side too high. She was an Avon representative, a babysitter, <clears throat> candy and ice cream parlor worker. Now that one. See, I feel sad. I had an emotional support recess and I ate it and I cried <laughs> then because I was upset. <clears throat> devastated. Yeah. I got a box of emotional support recess. <laughs> <laughs> She's a cashier at McDonald's, Pizza Hut, Supermarket. So the fountain she waitress different at McDonald's and wouldn't talk to you. <laughs> yes, yes. School teacher, Spanish teacher, yoga teacher. Wow, she's very versatile. She was eye doctor, nurse, pediatrician, surgeon. I mean, she's been everything. In the military, she was an army medic, paratrooper, of Air she Force, met Joe. Army. <laughs> yes. See now, GI Joe, I feel like would be a truly inspirational. Yes, he ain't got to put up with any crap. Yeah. Be like Arlie Irby, like. What's your major malfunction, maggot? <laughs> I just went to my Barbie. I don't feel like going to work. Get to work. Nobody feels like it. You're all losers. Get out of here. How tall are you? I'm five foot eight. I didn't know they stacked crap that high. Get out of here. <laughs> it's kicking you in the butt as you go out the yeah. door. Oh, so anyway, I don't know. I don't have anything else. Did you have well, anything I else? Just, I was thinking about this and it's like. Why has everything got to be an emotional support? Why can't you just, I'm reliving my childhood. I never had one of these. It's fun. I mean, 
I liked model cars. I don't have an emotional support model car. Maybe that's I've what's got wrong a model with you. Trans Am right there. Maybe you should take that to work with you every day. <laughs> and set it on my desk. I pretend I drive it. When the boss comes back and says something and, and you're stressing out, you can you can get it and talk to it. You would never betray me, Model Trans Am. <laughs> That's right. I aspire to be you. <laughs> or, or I've got Legos. My model, I, do I want an emotional support Lego? You could have emotional support I'd Lego. probably step on it. You might. <laughs> or you vi- have video games. You have Seinfeld Lego set. Yeah, yeah. So it would just be, you'd look at just like, what's up with computer programming? <laughs> yeah. Why are you such a weenie? <laughs> You're not helping me. Seinfeld, Lego, Lego Seinfeld. <laughs> You're my emotional support Lego. You need to support me. I don't know. It's just like everything has to have the emotional support tied. This is my emotional support lamp. That's right. Instead of doing what people should do, and that is pushing those emotions down. Shove them deep, down. Deep down inside yourself into the little box, and you shut that lid and you clasp it. And then you put the lock on it, and you lock it, and you take that key, and you throw it into the pit. That's right. Do you think they would let me take my emotional support Barbie on the plane with me? Probably now, yeah. <laughs> there was a time you were in a little seat right there. She'd have to buy her own seat. Yeah, but. oh, of course. I wouldn't expect you know her to ride for free. I'd rather sit next to the emotional support Barbie <laughs> than the diarrhea guy. <laughs> yes, yes, he needed support. He needed something. <laughs> he needed a, some uh, think, emotional support. Depends. Well, I think everyone else on the plane needed emotional support after that. Yeah. They all needed a Barbie. <laughs> Where's my dog? <laughs> That's disgusting. <laughs> it is. Oh, so all right. Well, let's move on. And uh, two men fighting over a chicken. That's right. Um, I don't know. It's kind of a weird. I don't. I'll just read the story. So would this be a cockfight? Kinda. Uh, kinda. <laughs> Um, so it go. it starts, it says, two, Oh no, two, I just saw where this is from. This is one of my favorite places to go. I love oh, it. Oh, Fort Myers. Yes. Yeah. Fort two, Myers beach, Florida. I yeah. love it. Two men arrested in, in Florida after getting into fight over chickens. I don't fully understand the story. That's why I kind of wanted to bring it. it says one might assume that residents in Fort Myers beach have better things to do with their time than fight over chickens. That's certainly the case for the majority of people who call the town home, but not all of them. A confrontation between neighbors on a Miramar street over six chickens that have been roaming the neighborhood for weeks. <laughs> Rumble, man. So it doesn't sound like it's their chickens. No, they just these chickens. <laughs> the footage shows a heated exchange between two men quickly turned physical. Video from one of the men involved is cut short after his phone is slapped out of his hand. Did the chicken slap it out of his hand or what? Fortunately, there was a surveillance camera nearby to capture the rest of the action from the wild scene. Officers from Lee County Sheriff's Office responded to the fight to restore peace to the neighborhood. Police confirmed that a fight between 65-year-old Robert Barassa and 43-year-old Deshiel Gonzalez started over the roaming chickens. Both men were arrested. So it says the video shows Barassa wearing a light blue shirt confronting Gonzalez, who is recording the interaction. The clip ends when Barassa slaps the phone out of Gonzalez's hand. And it, it's when the surveillance camera I picks, this. here's what I don't get. When the surveillance camera picks up the action, it shows Gonzalez on top of another okay. person <laughs> on the ground while Barassa stands close by and watches. So Barassa's watching. He, he's got him, out of it. I'm not fighting fight anymore. this other guy or this other person. It doesn't even say if it's a guy. Before police arrive on the scene, there were a couple of people making an attempt to break the fight up. In addition to the two men being arrested, Three of the chickens were placed in the back of a domestic animal. So three of them got arrested. The, the other three. Detained for questioning. <laughs> you so, need to spill the bean. Where are the other three chickens? I'm not saying anything. You <laughs> see the other three running through the bushes and stuff. Ah, run, run, run. It's a cop. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I don't understand. It says the town of Fort Myers was well aware of the controversy involving chickens prior to the fight. They admitted they hadn't yet come up with a... It's six chickens! They can't, they can't come up with a solution? I the, feel like a 22 and the colonel could take care of this problem, I right? Think, the town said... Seven so, herbs and spices, and you just 
cook them up, and we're done. We have a meal, and everybody gets to shake hands. We're done. Sorry, go ahead. Well, it says the town said. So, like, everybody in town said Oh, yeah. That, I, I <clears> picture <throat> this being the source of many meetings. Yeah. <laughs> the town has been aware of them since they first appeared, and the beach and street enforcement team have been working to find a soul. Again, it's six chickens. Why is it taking all this work? Maybe they're tough chickens. <laughs> on the mean streets of Fort Myers Beach. <laughs> the chickens on the street. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that most people don't want chickens <laughs> roaming around their neighborhood. You can put me in that category. That's right. But I do love wild things. <laughs> Just not chickens. So, <laughs> so if a few chickens have to roam around in the streets in order for a couple of crazy people to cause a public scene, sign me up. So this person wants to see the people fight over them. <laughs> but doesn't want them But doesn't there. want the chicken. But if she can see a fight because of it, then fine. So this town, I don't understand the dilemma. It's it seems six like it should be chickens. easy to take care of chickens, six chickens. But and why did they put three of them in the paddy wagon? And Well, they were causing trouble. <laughs> you three. They were probably standing around these, these guys fighting and egging them off. <laughs> did they cuff their legs? <laughs> yeah. Little chicken cuffs. <laughs> little, put them on the, like a chain game. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what? the trial date should be a little weird. Yeah, I don't get it. They arrested the Barossa, although he wasn't. <laughs> the other guy was fighting somebody else, and he was just standing around watching it. <laughs> and then ends up slapping the phone out of the guy's hand. I don't. It's a very Maybe confusing... Barossa got in fight with the three chickens, and that's why they were detained. <laughs> maybe, maybe. It was a rumble. It was a rumble. <laughs> the chicken rumble. That is that is weird. That I, is I wanted to share it because we've had a number of stories around here with chickens. Yeah, chickens you know, are they're one of our favorite and, topics. They're, yeah, they're fun. So. Yeah, Mike, if you're listening, there's a chicken story for yeah. you. Yeah. So yeah, this is this is scary though. Six of them roaming roaming the streets. Sound like they're it's a gang. Yeah, sounds like they're causing all kinds of problems. Or maybe it was three and three. Maybe you had the east side and the west side. <laughs> they were fighting. Chicken. The chickens were fighting. Yeah, it started that way, and Barasso was for the west side. That's right. Gonzalez the, the was, was for the, the east, east side. And, the east west. Yeah. Oh, it so, could be. <clears throat> it's a territory. Well, it thing. is. It's a territorial. You've been in my coop. Yeah. <laughs> so, Goodness anyways, crazy. that's the chicken story. All right. Well, thank you so much. That was uh, yeah, that was fun. It was enlightening. It was enlightening. I just I, hope we don't have any rumbles around here. Wow. Chance. I mean, I'm a little nervous. I now. am too. I'm afraid to go out. I'll have to hire some security. <laughs> a rooster or <laughs> That's right. or a coyote. A weasel. A chicken hawk. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> all right. You got, got anything else? Or no, is that wrapping that's it up? all I got. All right. Hey, thank you so much for tuning in, for listening. Uh we hope next week Mike will be here and uh, he'll yeah. fill us in on his exploits. Clean his nooks and crannies out. Yeah, I hope they're clean. I'm not cleaning them. He's You're go not saying we're cleaning and clean, clean them out. Oh, jeez. <laughs> yeah. So hopefully he's here next week. We hope you're uh, tuning in in seven days. Hope you have a great week. And until then, see ya. Later. Peace. Well, that wraps up another episode. Thanks for listening. Please be sure to subscribe. And you can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter.